Hello, and welcome to the forum. Every week, we take no more than 15 minutes to discuss the three highest conviction ideas surfaced across the Smart Karma network, cutting through the noise and helping you zero in on what truly matters most. The live forum and Q&A session are exclusively available to Smart Karma Plus subscribers. You can always revisit previous episodes on this YouTube channel. Without further ado, let's dive into this week's ideas. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Spot Karma Weekly Forum. I hope you all had a good Chinese New Year break, well rested, with time spent with family and friends. Quick reminder the forum is a high impact weekly live webinar, which is exclusive for Smart Karma Plus subscribers. We use the forum to discuss some of the best, highest conviction ideas and insights surfaced across the network. Quick review of our disclaimer. The forum is meant purely for informational purposes and it does not uh, constitute investment advice. It is the opinion not of Smart Karma, but that of our inside providers. And lastly, chat and house rule applies. So please do not share the contents of the forum without express permission. Brief look at where we left it last week. This was actually before Chinese New Year. We took a look at Rex International. This is a name that we've spoken about since it was about 18 cents a share. And um, this week it touched nearly 40 cents. We see it as a prime beneficiary of rising oil prices. And as of now, Smart Karma remains the only coverage on this name on the street. We took a look at Water Oasis, which is again an undercovered uh, medical aesthetics company in Hong Kong. We discussed how it's executing really well and how it's a very, very compelling small cap. And third, we took a look at probably the most important thematic in China, which is the real estate market and how the government is using very interesting and creative techniques to shore up confidence and get the market into a position from where growth can commence again. A brief reminder also that in case you've missed the previous forums, they are now all available on our YouTube channel. Uh, you just need to go to YouTube and search for Smart Karma Plus weekly forums. You can also share these with your friends in case you're interested in spreading the good word about Smart Karma. Today, we will look at three ideas. First, we will begin by looking at crude palm oil plantation companies in, uh, in this part of the world, in Southeast Asia, and why it makes sense to own these into earnings. Second, we will take a look at Singapore-listed hospital company called Raffles Medical. And last, we will revisit an old favorite idea of ours, which is Oriental Watch, and how things are developing for the company into the second half. Quick reminder, you can ask questions at any time using the Q&A button, and we will get to these towards the end of the forum. So crude palm oil companies, um, there is reason to be courageous into the upcoming earnings cycle, which begins this month. Um, we feel that this would be a very strong and big earnings seasons ahead. This is a space that's been covered by several analysts on the platform, including David Blenner Hassett, who has more recently written about Wilma. But the name that we will focus on today is uh, Bumitama Agri, which is a 750 million US dollar market cap company listed in Singapore. It trades about $250,000 a day, so it's not the world's most liquid at the moment. Uh, but there are reasons why we must explore this. So first things first, as you can see from the chart on the right hand side, the blue line is the price of the underlying commodity, which is palm oil. And the purple line is the share price of Bumitama over the last 10 years. As you can see, that Bumitama is still trading well below its IPO price and has severely languished the move that we've seen in palm oil prices since the start of last year. Why has this happened? Firstly, because companies like Bumitama sold most of their palm oil produce on contract pricing. These were longer term contracts which were struck at previous prevailing prices, which is somewhere around here. However, at the end of the second half of 
last year, uh, the company switched from contract to spot and hence it is now starting to sell at these kind of prices. And this is something, this is a trend that we've seen across the entire universe of palm oil companies, that companies have moved from contract to spot, which means that earnings for these names are going to be significantly higher than what analysts have currently estimated, which means that there is room for tremendous share price catch up. Now, Bumitama Agri is perhaps the most efficient palm oil producer, which means it's got the lowest cost of production, which in turn means it's going to have the highest profitability. Secondly, it also has a formal 40% dividend payout ratio, which means that shareholders who own the stock will not only benefit from the capital appreciation, but will also receive very, very big dividends. Next, it's also important to remember that this would be the 10th year of listing for Bumitama, which perhaps means that there is additional scope for special dividends. If one were to impute today's palm oil prices for the rest of the year, Bumitama could well be trading at about 18% dividend yield for 2022, which is very, very generous. These stocks typically trade at a five to 6% dividend yield, which means there is significant mispricing at the moment. Now, uh, there are a few analysts who cover this name, like analysts from Maybank, DBS, CIMB. We expect these analysts to revise their estimates significantly after results, which are on the 28th of February. I'm gonna move on to the next idea for today, which is Raffles Medical. Raffles Medical is, um, a, is sort of an, a, an age old name here in Singapore. It's a very, very well known brand um, and a marquee brand as such. The market cap is just under 2 billion US dollars. The stock trades just less than $2 million a day. And um, there is an emerging strong thesis for the company. First of all, just briefly, Raffles Medical is more than a hospital. It is, in fact, a large integrated healthcare group in Singapore. They operate a, a prominent hospital. They operate GP clinics. They operate specialist clinics. They are also among the seven healthcare insurance providers in Singapore. They also have a telemedicine business now. And more recently, they have become the monopoly provider of PCR tests at Changi Airport, and also have played a significant part in Singapore's vaccination drive. So why is this name interesting? For the last two years, borders have been shut or have been very tight, which means medical tourism has been low and also elective procedures have, at the hospital have been low. However, the company has more than made up for that shortfall with its participation in vaccinations and PCR testing. PCR tests alone might contribute more than $350 million a year. We do not think these requirements are going to disappear anytime soon. In addition, Raffles has very successfully expanded into China. As you can see from the image on the right-hand side, this is their new hospital in Shanghai which has commenced and will ramp up over the next three years. They also have facilities in Chongqing and Beijing now. They have done this entire expansion using their own accrued cash and not having to tap the market for additional capital. Now the CapEx is complete and over the next few years, as the returns come in, we expect the name to significantly rewrite. Raffles is currently trading at a discount to regional hospitals, high hospitals, which we think is misplaced. Another important thing to note is that the, the, the chairman, who's the major shareholder, has been buying stock, and the company itself has been doing a buyback as well. We feel uh, there is potential for significant um, capital management here, and also potential for significant capital appreciation. However, this is a slow and steady name that will appreciate over the next two to three years, as opposed to something that happens straight away. And lastly and finally, we think Raffles would, would be a very, very good acquisition candidate. The chairman is now um, in his 70s. 
There isn't a clear succession plan. And as we mentioned earlier, Raffles is a marquee brand. We feel a regional operator or even a Chinese player would be interested in this sort of an acquisition. With this, I'm going to move on to the third and final idea for today. This is a recap of one of our favorite names uh, over the last year, which is Oriental Watch 398 Hong Kong. The market cap is $285 million and it trades over a million dollars a day. Samir Taneja has covered this name extensively on the platform. What does the company do? This company is a retailer of watches in Hong Kong, Macau, and China. The reason we like the name um, when we first picked up was because it was showing accelerating growth, but more importantly, um, it was demonstrating the ability to return a lot of cash back to shareholders through lots of dividends. A lot of that thesis has played out. The total return from the stock has been exceptional. What are we seeing now? Uh, we have been seeing resilient same-store sales uh, in Hong Kong. However, we feel that with recent crackdowns, that might take a little step back. Meanwhile, their Chinese sales have been extremely strong. Their gross margins are expanded quickly because watch prices have increased globally. The major luxury watch brands have repriced in January, which means that when you do the analysis and the numbers, uh, you're looking at a full year dividend yield of close to 17%. And you can see in the chart on the right hand side how this company has continued to grow its dividends. Meanwhile, there is significant margin of safety here. Net cash is greater than 50% of market cap. And with that, I'll round up today's forum. I'm happy to take any questions. We've got one question coming in uh, on Bumitama, which is how does Bumitama compare to other palm oil counters like Golden Agri, Interfood, Mewa, First Resources? Two things to know. First of all, Bumitama is an upstream palm oil producer, which means they do not have any refining activity, uh, unlike names like Mewa. Um, at this moment, you do not want downstream exposure, you want upstream exposure. So that's the first thing. The second thing is uh, Bumitama is uh, owned by a very prominent Indonesian group, as well as IOI in Malaysia, which is the largest plantation company out of Malaysia. So it has very unique shareholding and very strong shareholders uh, that have had very, very good corporate governance over the last few years. That tends to be very important. Thirdly, Bumitama is the most efficient um, producer uh, at least uh, out of Indonesia, which means it will capture upside very well. And lastly, it has among the highest dividend payout ratios that we've seen um, in the universe of palm oil companies. So I think for those reasons, it stands out a little bit. Uh, it is, uh, you know, the whole space is extremely under owned. So we expect all the names to do quite well. But you know, in typical smart karma fashion, we, we really like to find uh, the real gems of the space here. Okay, if there are no further questions, I'm gonna thank you all for uh, joining the forum today. Uh, you can uh, you know, view videos of the prior forums on our YouTube channel. Please send us further ideas through the platform and we look forward to uh, speaking to you next week. Thanks very much. That's it for this week. You can find more ideas like the ones we discussed today on demand on our YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification button. If you like these ideas, spread the word. Tell a fellow investor about Smart Karma Plus and follow us on social media. Just search for Smart Karma. And of course, don't forget to visit smartkarma.com for more independent, differentiated investment insights. Thanks for watching and see you next week.